Here's a blues classic that I've received requests to learn from 16 different people. So I've decided to take a closer look at how John Lee Hooker played this song on those occasions when he played it entirely unaccompanied. Researching several different recordings of John Lee Hooker playing this song, I found that when he played it alone, he invariably just stuck to the one chord, E7. But what was interesting to me is that when he had other musicians accompany him, they almost always failed to keep the sequence this pure and couldn't help themselves playing bass lines, chords, riffs, um, that at least implied the odd change up to A7th. So the first thing to say about this song is that it's not about chords. It's not even really about fancy licks, but it is all about rhythm and feel. Let's take a look at the intro. <laughs> So the first lick is a slide from fret 2 to 4 on the G string. Then the note at fret 3 on the B string. Then back down the slide on the 3rd string with a hint of a pull off to the open string at the end of the slide. Then it's down to E at fret 2 on the D string, open D, and back to the E. response theme used so much in early blues, we answer that first lick with this bass line. So that's the open E string, G at fret 3 on that string, open A, back to open E. Of course, you can do all this with a plectrum. But John Lee Hooker very much used thumb and, and fingers to play. So if you want to get a more authentic sound, I'd encourage you to experiment with that. the more thumb the better. The next lick starts on the note E, uh, fret 2 on the D string, up to the open G, second fret on the G string, back to G, back to the E, second fret on the D string, open it to the D and back to the E again. And this too is followed with the same bass slick response. So, so far we've got... The next lick is a slight variation on the first lick. So instead of the slide, we use a slight bend at fret 3 on the B string. Then back to open B, and then the same second half of the riff as before with our A fret 2 on the G string, open to G, 
and then back down to the E, fret two on the D string, off to open D and back to the E again. This is followed again by the same bass line lick. And then the fourth line is the same as the second one. Again, followed by the same bass line. So that whole intro goes like this. Here it is first at slow speed. And something a bit more like the proper speed. Then, once the vocals start, we have the same basic lick repeated no less than 16 times once in response to each vocal line. Boom, 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 boom. Gonna shoot you right down. Right off of your feet. Take you home with me. And so on. So this starts with the note D at fret three on the B string back to open B, so then we come down to the note A at fret 2 on the G string, a big bed, then hit either the top string or both the top and second string, uh, doesn't really much matter, and then back to this A note with a bend and a pull off, and then back down to the E note at fret 2 there. And he pretty much has the E chord down by the time he gets back to that. Sometimes he just hits the individual note, sometimes he hits a bit of chord. Now, unless you have very large hands, like old John Lee Hooker did, then it's extremely hard to play it exactly the way he did. If you watch the videos, you'll see he kept the chord held down and used his little finger, um, all kinds of things going on there that for most of us are just impossible. So my advice about this is to learn to play the right notes using whatever technique suits your particular hand size and finger length, and then listen carefully to the recordings and do your best to emulate that fantastic freestyle style that he had. Um, and get as close as you can. I'll leave you to practice, but with the health warning that if you're not used to playing with thumb and fingers on your right hand, do leave plenty of recovery time between sessions or you'll end up with some pretty mean blisters. See you again next time. I got blisters on my fingers!